Let's pray. Our merciful and gracious Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy great and wonderful name. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that you have given to us, that you've seen fit to take care of us, provide for us, and bless us with health, safety, and the comforts of this life that we've enjoyed. We're thankful, Father, for the family, 
for the community and the friends and especially the congregation here at Liberty you've blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for your church and that we know so many who are in part of your church and that we're able to spend time with, learn from, and be encouraged by. We're thankful, Father, that you have blessed us in so many ways physically in this life. We especially thank you, Father, for the spiritual blessings that you give to us. You bless us every day and allow us to have time in your word, be able to pray to you, to be able to read from your word and better understand and be reminded of who you are and what all you have done and what you have promised to us. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that you give to us, many that we know about through your word, many that we don't under, fully understand, for the guidance, encouragement, strength, and blessings that you give to us, many that we don't see and probably don't appreciate as fully as we should. We thank you most of all, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for your willingness to send him, his willingness to come to the earth, to live a humble life, and to be an example and a blessing and a help, to show others how we should live, showing love and mercy and forgiveness, showing zeal for your word and your will, showing strength and compassion. We pray, Father, you might help us, uh, that we might better understand and meditate on these things so that we can be more like your son every day. Thank you, Father, for this evening and the time that we have to spend with each other. Thank you, Lord, for the congregation that's here. Thank you for all of those that have come before, many who have passed on, who have done so much to establish your church here in this community. We thank you, Father, for all those who've, who have done so much for us here. We're thankful, Father, for all those who are here and who continue to work to strengthen and encourage this congregation of your church. We pray, Father, for your blessings on the leaders here. We pray, Father, that you would guide them and encourage them, direct them in all that they do and help them that they might know how to properly lead this congregation and glorify you and be pleasing in your sight. We pray, Father, for your blessings on everyone here that we might better appreciate the importance of this, the church here, that we might better appreciate what we're able to do to help each other, that we might look for and find and make the most of the opportunities that you give to us to serve each other, to help, to encourage, to strengthen, to bear each other's burdens. We pray, Father, that you would bless us, that we would grow closer to each other. We might better understand each other's strengths and weaknesses, be better able to communicate with each other. We pray, Father, for your blessings on us here, that we might grow closer to each other and closer to you better able to serve you and be a blessing to our community and to spread your gospel and bring others to you. Please bless the one leading class this evening that he might talk to us about something we most need to hear that will be in, a help to us, that will better prepare us for the week ahead, that will help us to better understand your will for our lives and how we should live the rest of the week that we have. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Please watch over us and guide us. Please continue to be merciful and gracious to us. Your will be done in all things. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. We have been talking about heaven, heaven um, for, for a while now, I'm kind of off and on, but I'll look at it again tonight. Before we get into that, I, I mentioned to some of you, it just, certain things just kind of hit me certain ways. I get a lot of junk text messages. I mean, I sign up for different um, stores or whatever, and this sale, that sale, whatever else, but, and I almost didn't read this one because I get, I'm on PetSmart. I don't get a lot of stuff from PetSmart, you know, the, the, the pet store, but um, usually I don't pay attention to, because it's usually just a, it's a coupon for something or whatever. 
But I read this one and I double read it. Then I said, I'm going to check to make sure I'm not misunderstanding it and kind of looked and realized I wasn't. It's from PetSmart. It says, celebrate pride with your BFF, exclamation point. Earn double points on every pride purchase through July the 30th. See terms. Okay, so it's, it's um, you know, celebrating pride with your BFF, whatever. And so I, I got um. They kind of, I said, maybe I misunderstood something. Maybe you're proud of your pet or whatever. But I got on their website and looked, and there is a pride shop. You can dress your little dog or cat or whatever the pet is in any kind of outfit promoting LGBT stuff and has all sorts of accessories for you and your, your pet. And I, was, um, I, was, I got to looking at it as well, and they donate hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, of certain, uh, any purchase in there. They, they, send at least $200,000 total to certain LGBT stuff within, you know, the school system to help promote certain, certain things. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm removing myself from that, from that list. What's that? Yeah, yeah the, the, do the dog's not the one I'm worried about so much, you know. But, um, and I guess you could get stuff with a rainbow bonnet and say you're promoting God's promise to God's promise to Noah. Um, we went up to see that Noah's Ark, you know, replica in Kentucky, and the, in their in their gift shop they have all sorts of rainbow shirts and outfit things that says "Reclaiming the Rainbow." I mean, you know, for the right right purpose. But yeah, like I say, those animals, they're they're not the ones that you have to to worry about. Yeah, um, they're, they're not going to be held accountable for what they do. They don't have to worry about that. But anyway, that just kind of hit me wrong. Uh, but that's just one more thing in the world today, and. I mean, we love everyone, yes, but we want everyone, God wants everyone to come to repentance, whether it's me, you, or whoever it may be. Uh, we have to be careful of what we condone, what we promote, what we accept, because what we condone, what we accept, should be what God condones and accepts, and what he does not, we should not. And so um, the world bombards us with that, but we need to stand for the truth. And we've, we've seen that in some of the denominational world um, in, in, in with certain groups. Um, Debating that back and forth, I, I was reading, you know, the, the Methodist church has had a big thing back and forth on that. And I think most of the ones through this area have left the United Methodist and gone to other groups. But there was, a, I don't know who the preacher was in, the paper, um, in an article on WSFA bemoaning the fact that that shows a lack of love on their part. You know, not staying within the United. And I thought, well, no, at least in that it shows a trying to stand for something that's right and stand against something that's wrong. And so we need to be careful. Don't, don't go to man's standards, go to God's standards. But anyway, the lesson for another day, I just, that just kind of hit me just a few minutes ago when I read that. Uh, we've been talking about heaven. Heaven is a place of new things. Um, will there be many in heaven? We said, well, there will be a lot of people in heaven, but not a large percentage of people will go to heaven. Percentage-wise, it's not going to be a lot. Um, who will be in heaven? Well, those that do the will of God. You know, all the saved of all the ages will be there. Um, of course, we, we know flesh and blood cannot enter in the kingdom of heaven. And somewhere along the way, we're going to look at a description given of heaven. And uh, I don't remember if it's on these questions or not. If it's not, we'll look at it elsewise. elsewise. But it puts it into a description in earthly terms that we can relate to. But it's going to be a literal, it's going to be literal gold there, literal pearls, um, a, a, a physical sea, flesh and blood doesn't enter. It's a spiritual realm, but whatever we read in the scriptures, it, it doesn't even begin to compare to the glory that will be there. I can't help but think it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful place. And um, our corruptible body will put on incorruption, mortal body will put on immortality. Um, even those who have died, you know, they have they won't miss out. I mean, you know, sometimes I'm, you know, I remember when I was. Um, eight, nine years old, I started figuring out, boy, the, when the year 2000 would be here. I, mean, I was born in 62, so, um, but I, was, I got to looking at that right around 1970, 75, and I go, boy, it's going to be a whole number of 25 years. I wonder if I'll still be alive, you know, when, when the year 2000 comes. And, um, you know, thinking, you know, I could die before then and miss, and miss out on all the things that supposedly were going to happen at the year 2000. But, you know, if we die faithful, if we die in the Lord, even when, you know, we won't miss out on the joys of heaven. Any comments before we get to number, um, number seven? What will happen to those who are alive when he comes? 
we have called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. I mean, we look at this and, you know, the dead in Christ arise, be with the Lord. We will be called to be with the Lord if you're alive when he comes. And it, it says always be with the Lord. There's nothing in the scripture, and we talked about this already, that says the Lord will set foot on earth again. Um, you know, people look at the kingdom and things and, and, and say, well, the Lord's going to set foot back on earth. No, the scriptures didn't ever say that he will. This world, the universe, will be destroyed. You know, it's not going to be... He destroyed right there. What's that? At that point? Yeah. Um, you know, again, you and I will disagree on, and, um, on how many coming... What is the day of the Lord compared to that day? Um, the day of the Lord, I, I, when Christ comes back again, I think that's the last day, the last trump, the last day of earth, existence on earth. Um, when he comes and we, the righteous meet the Lord in the air, I, mean, I think there's going to be a judgment at that point in heaven or hell. Um, no mention of judgment there. Oh, I know. It doesn't mention everything. About, I mean, every verse doesn't mention everything that's going to happen in one verse. Um, you know, there's, in this in particular, it's just saying, it's, it's focused on the Thessalonian, Thessalonican brethren who were worried about those who were faithful who had died, and would they miss out? And he said, no. And he, he's, he's dealing right here with the righteous. He's not even talking about the wicked here. Other places will talk about that. But he's just saying, look, you know, we're, we're all going to go and be with the Lord um, in eternity, whether dead or alive at the time he comes back again. 1 Corinthians 15 says this corruptible will put on incorruption and mortal will put on immortality will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye when the Lord appears. Uh, we will also, those that are dead, will be raised incorruptible, immortal. And, um, you know, so I, I, to me, when you read all these scriptures, and we, we talked about this some when we was talking about um, some other subjects previously. You know, I believe it's going to be the one coming that's left. And that's, we had the first coming, then the second coming, uh, of Christ, and then it's going to be eternity, you know, judgment and eternity. Um, you know, now, different ones will have different ideas on that, but that's what I, that's what I, oh, I know it says that. It says we'll meet the Lord in the air. We will be with the Lord. And um, I think when you start getting some details on that, what happens when we go to meet the Lord in the air, there's going to be a judgment that takes place, and there's going to be a parting of the ways. We, we will stay with the Lord if you're if you're a faithful Christian, you'll stay with the Lord and be with the Lord. The others will say, "Depart from me, you who work iniquity." You know, I never knew you, or whatever, and they'll be cast in the lake of fire and brimstone. So, I mean, I, I don't think that contradicts this. Um, it's like when we looked at those other things uh, a couple of weeks ago. No, that's what I'm saying. I, I think they can all be put together and still point to one coming that's, that's left, not two or some will say even three comings. But um, the bottom line, though, is this. When the Lord comes back again, we better be ready. I mean, you know, we better be ready. If, you know, what, we really need to be ready at all moments because we may take our last breath. I may, I hope I don't, but I, I may fall over with a heart attack right now um, and, and die. Um, it's like I, told, I think I've told you all before, when, I, when Rachel and I turned 60, um, I can't remember which one of the grandchildren first. It, Sounds more like an Emma statement. Said, "Y'all are getting." You, I said, "Well, he told Grand for Rachel first. He said, Grand, you're getting ready to go to heaven. You <laughs> know, 60 years old, getting old. To a four-year, to a, a three-year-old, four-year-old, whatever. That's old, you know. But I, I said, I hope you know we we better be ready. But I hope it's a little bit longer. But the point is, we need to be ready at all times because I don't know when I'll die. But also, I need to be ready at all times because I don't know when the Lord's going to come back again. And and we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. And um, we will, um, anyway, that's the Lord coming back, being prepared. We will go and be with the Lord. Ultimately, the end result of being with the Lord is heaven. Being in, well, the end result is either heaven or hell. And that's in a forever place. Whatever you say between here and there, it's forever in heaven or forever in hell. And, and um, you know, it's not any, once you're there, oh, you, just, you get just a little... You know, you serve a, you serve a thousand years or a hundred years or whatever in hell, then you get out. You know, that's what some um, some will teach, but it's not that way. And the, the positive side is to always be with the Lord, to be there with Him, 
and not miss out. And that, can yes? I, can I, uh, is there going to be two Armageddon's? Okay, okay. Um, I'm just, I'm just yeah, I, no, I mean, and again, we, um, I'm trying to see how much we want to get back into some of this. And I tell you what, I do have some material that I'll give to anybody that wants it as well. Um, there's a wonderful book that Apologetics Press has put out that deals with questions about rapture, about uh, about Armageddon, about the kingdom, that really explain it better than I can at this point. Just lays it out and thing. I've got several copies of that um, that I picked up today, and I meant to bring them and I did not, but I'll get it. But as far, I believe, you know, in, in the book of Revelation, you had that battle of Armageddon, and it's a battle of good and evil, God, Satan, right and wrong. And I do believe that's a battle that, I still think it has, is a battle that's gone on. I think it's, it's describing a battle that began back, you see it in the Garden of Eden, with, with um, the serpent versus Adam and Eve, um, you, in serpent versus God. You see it all through the scripture in the Old Testament and New Testament. You see it today, good and evil fighting. And it will culminate really at the end of time. At that point, I mean, you know, I think when Christ rose up from the dead, I mean, the victory was really his at that point. I mean, he had died for our sins. He had victory over death, but ultimately, all of that will be cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, be done away with completely. The enemy will be gone. The, the total eternal victory will belong to Christ. And so that, you know, the battle, it's not gonna be, at that point, there's no, no, no longer any fighting between good and evil. Evil's done away with, and yes. Well, uh, if, uh, is it gonna be uh, uh, Michael, is he gonna cast Satan as far as Satan, I mean, he's, he's not, I mean, and again, we'd have to get into a, a good study on Revelation, but Satan's, I guess he's bound to a certain point, but he does, he's, he's not incapacitated to the point that he can't, he still carries on, he's still active in the world today, and I mean, you, you know he is, but eventually, in Revelation, it says he's going to be taken, and he's going to be cast into the, the lake that burns the fire and brimstone. It cast, who's going to be casting him? No, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I don't remember how it's worded in there now. I, I'm trying to think. I, but ultimately, it's through God's authority that it's done. I can't remember now how it's worded there of who's casting him. I, I, and if somebody knows the scripture on that, please tell me. Uh, but I mean, it, it just. It, I know it does say that he was cast in there, uh, that he will be cast in there. In other words, that point when Satan and all his minions are in there, all the evil people are in there, we don't have to worry about sin and unrighteousness and wickedness anymore because we're in a place that's going to be perfect and sinless and um, any iniquity and the ones that work iniquity is gone. I mean, you know, sin, death, all that's cast into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Um, so, I mean, it's ultimate, complete victory. You know, we look at wars that we fight in this world, um, and there's always mop-up things to do, and we, we leave some of the enemy here or there, and there's always problems following it. In, the, in this ultimate battle, it's gonna be complete victory. There's not gonna be mop-up do it. And, and I, that may not answer everything you want, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I got a book I'll give to you. It's, um, what's, the, what's the name? I think it's called The End Times. Y'all have that? Okay, well I have. That, that is a good, that, that book, it's written by, um, I think Dave Miller's the one that wrote it, but I mean, it's, it, it lays it out very, you can get as deep into it as you want to, or you can pull back, but it really, it lays out, well, well I went to, the material I used when I went to the Greek words and all that, it was in there, uh, and then also it looks at all the, script, the different scriptures and, and helps you put the puzzle together, and then it discusses the kingdom, and it discusses the battle of Armageddon, and I think it'd be good to kind of read through that from beginning to end, because then you see how the picture fits together rather than pulling this piece and that piece. Well, I read in the Bible where there's going to be hunters that will be with the Lord, hunters. I mean, in, in uh, Watchmen. Right. You know, and that's going on. Was it hunters back then that had Satan been put in, has he been put in Princeton yet? <laughs> he is still, at, he still, he still has power, still has he, he's, God puts a limit on what he can do. You see that even with Job, you know. He, you, you can touch him, but don't kill him. And, and God says, look, you can tempt, he can tempt man, but 
there's got to be a way of escape for us. He won't, you know, there's a limit to his power, but he's called, the, you know, the prince of this earth even. So he does still have some authority and is still doing it, but God limits how much, he can't force you to go to hell. But he's still active. So in other words, I don't think he's bound and thrown in the pit, you know, th thrown where he can't do anything yet. When he is ultimately cast into hell, he's not going to have access to do anything to us in. So that, that hasn't, I don't think that's come yet. I mean, um, I think he realized when Christ rose from the dead that he's, he was, uh, you know, that's one of those uh-oh moments for him. Because I, I can't help but think he thought I got the victory when he bruised his heel. But when, when Jesus crushed his head, as it were, bruised his head, I, he realized, I think he realized. And he wants to take as many people with him. And he's still trying to do that now. And that's why we need to look at, uh, there's two sides of it. I want to go to heaven. But there's the other side, I do not want to go to hell. <laughs> you know, so, but um, seriously, though, I mean, I, you have ordered that book. If you don't, um, I've, got a, I've got three copies. I meant to bring them tonight. Um, I, well, actually, I had two extras. Um, I got one I've got to give to somebody that's, um, that I've been talking to as well. But it, read through that. It's easy to read, but it can, you can get, it kind of lays it out in order. And at that point, if you look at it and go, ooh, I, I need to figure out something else, I think it'll be, Help some there, yeah. Sure, that's fine. that's fine. I appreciate your questions. Mark gave me a, Mark uh, gave me a little, uh, on the topic of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he said, Jesus said, I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to go to the cross. And he said, I'm going to go to the cross. And he said, Okay, it depends on your definition of that. I mean, what, do you know what it says in there, Mark? Okay, I, I'm going to have to go back and look at it, because like I said, it, it, you know, I, I will quote, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Armageddon, Armageddon, the battle of, yeah, Megiddo, yeah. It, there was a valley outside of Jerusalem that a lot of battles had been fought at, decisive battles between you know, God's people and others. It's also where, the, um, it's also where sacrifice, you know, human sacrifices had been made, that, you know, by sacrificing your children, passing them through the fire. It's also a place where there was a garbage heat. You know, that's where they, Jerusalem put their garbage and it burned all, the fire burned all the time, which would make you think of, you know, garbage and rottenness and death and burning. And it's, it's kind of a picture of, you know, uh, of hell. But, but, now the, but now, the, the picture that's you know, Revelation is written in figurative terms, and it, but I mean the picture is given there is a, a decisive battle, uh, yeah, and a, a battle of good and evil, and there is a battle of good and evil. And like I said, um, I remember in I took a Revelation class under Brother West W. B. West, um, who many of you know, but his if I remember correctly, it's been that's been back in the early 80s, you know, but. Um, it was, it's basically that, you know, it's a battle that you see uh, that's been going on between God and Satan. I mean, since you have Satan rising up in heaven trying to cast him down, and then you have um, there in the Garden of Eden starting there as well, you have um, Satan, the serpent, trying to tempt them. And, and you just see that battle continuing. And um, you, you see it all through the Old Testament. I mean, you see God's people being anything but God's people. Um, you see the enemies at times prevailing over them, but then ultimately God keeping his promise and bringing them back into the land. You see in the New Testament church, the persecution that took place there, the evil that was there. Um, back in the first century, Christians being fed to the lions, Christians being put to death. Um, and then you go through the centuries and see it. And, you, and we see it today. I, mean, I was talking about that text message that I received. I mean, that, that's the devil at work on things. I mean, just evil in the world. But ultimately, if I side with evil, I'm going to lose. That, that's the, the idea, really the, the theme of Revelation is victories in Christ. And, and that when that battle comes to an end, when, when the final, um, when the Lord comes back again, and we're standing in judgment, and this world is destroyed, I mean, it's going to be victory in Christ. And all those that are on Satan's side, if you're not on the Lord's side, you're on Satan's side, will be cast in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Satan himself will. All those angels that followed after him will. I mean, they're eternally lost. 
I mean, you know, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was. But others will go there as well because they've chosen to be, follow Satan rather than um, to follow um, God. And some do it directly. I mean, it amazes me. I was reading, um, I, I like, I read the, the headlines on things and I don't always read the article, but talking about um, Satan, Satan clubs are getting popular after school, for after school things. You know, different extracurricular, extracurricular activities. You can join your local Satan club or, you know, satanic club. But, um, but sir, um, when you get that book, it, I, I, it's, it lays it out to me logically and, and more importantly, scripturally. And um, look at that and um, then we can come back and follow up on some questions because others have, have that. Go ahead. Yeah, one thing to that. Sure. The uh, magazine that I gave her mm -hmm. look at is the most recent mm -hmm. release of Revelation by politics. Right. Right. Okay. What you do in this is talking about Matthew 24, the apostle asked Jesus when he said, You see the temple, and I want to talk to you about the other temple. He said, You see what will be the sign of his coming. So what they spend most of this month with, this was the March issue back. This is just explaining the structure. Okay. There are people like Alan Lindsay who wrote the late great planet Earth in a movie about the time I left the left of the earth. Right. I see the movie. I read the book. That builds a lot of fantastic language that takes what Jesus was saying about the structure of Jerusalem and applying it to the end of time. So they misapply it there. And there are a great many denominations that have left that study. They have two questions for the apostles. The first one, he gives signs. Yeah, most of the yeah. He allows it to a certain point. So Satan's not going to come down and say, Earl, I want you to be lost, and then you can't do nothing about it. I mean, you can choose to give in, or you, you can have victory and overcome, you know. So, um, and uh, now that book that, I, that book we're talking about, again, it's not the end all book, but I've, I did a lot of different reading com through commentaries like that, you know, um, on those other lessons, and then. Um, through the scripture, all the scriptures as well, and then different books. And I, to me, with my brain, my, now my brain don't work like everybody's does, but with the way my brain ticks, it made the most sense to me as far as how he explained certain things in there. And again, it goes back, to every, every bit of it goes back to scripture. Now, um, but the bottom line is, in that battle, the, the, the good and evil, light and darkness, God versus Satan, the world look so victorious. I mean, you, 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 everywhere you turn, there's just evil, and um, you, you see all this, like the, um, the um, what do you call the, um, um, the drag queen things, reading to, um, drag queens reading to little children, and then you start seeing all the things that's being 
shove down children's throat from a little age on up, and then you, then you get into the workplace, and, and you know, if you say the wrong thing to somebody, you can get in all kinds of trouble. And, and uh, you know, I know you've had some experience with some of that, but um, it looks like evil's winning. But guess what? It, it's not ultimately. It may have a few, few little high moments here and there, but ultimately the victory is Christ. You know, it's in Christ. And we want to go to heaven. I mean, a lot of people, the broad way, that number two, will many enter into heaven? Well, the majority is going that broad way. But the majority is not always right. And in this case, they're not. And uh, we need to be sure we go to heaven. You asked about chapter and verse about putting Satan. Right. Okay. Okay. There, there's a, there is a limiting of his power, and I believe, again, I, when I look at that and it talks about some things, I believe a lot of that is, as we preach and teach the word, it does, it does bind the, the, the fulfillment of the, of the, of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Um, gave us ultimate victory over him and then the revealing of that then the gospel message of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus has bound him in a lot of ways. I mean, not that he can't still have power, but it shows the ultimate victory is Christ. But ultimately, he will be thrown into the, um, he will, let's see, where is it? Uh, yeah, verse, go down to verse 9. They, um, let's see. Verse 10, the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. They'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I meant, um, then you go on down further, um, at the, for the end of verse 13 is judgment. And this is then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. No more death. I mean, you have the second death is eternal, but also Hades, we talked about the Hadean realm, all that. Cast, uh, cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So there's two choices. <laughs> Heaven or the lake of fire. You know, so, but that's his ultimate destiny. And so, um, and, you know, I was... There will be no Christians in at that point. At the, it, the, yeah, that's after that's been emptied. Yeah. yeah. What? Christ's second coming. Right. I mean, yeah. But with, when once, you know, the Hadean realm is a temporary setup until everything culminates at the end. I mean, you have the good and the bad. You have paradise. You have torment that's there. And he wouldn't kill. He wouldn't ruin it. Burn up Hades and face the Christians. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I agree. It's not, it's not going to be full of Christians and they go, oops, I forgot to get some. You know, I mean, no, I, I, agree, you know, I agree with you. That, but that it's going to, you know, it, it has served its purpose. It's just like you look at... Uh, the, you know, the Old Testament leading us up to the New Covenant, you know, it serves its purpose and it's fulfilled. And then the Hadean realm serves its purpose and it's fulfilled and it winds up, um, you know, it, when it's not needed. I mean, there's not going to be any Christians left in there being thrown in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Um, but all those who are faithful, not just Christians, but you go back to under the patriarch age, patriarchal age, um, all those saved under there will, will be in heaven. The, under the Mosaic age, all those saved under that will be in heaven. All the, the, you know, the, the, the good angels will be in heaven. All the saved of all the ages will be there. And then all this evil, all this wicked, all those, I mean, even some that claim to be Christians will be lost. I mean, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter, but he who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. Other thoughts? Yeah. They said it, it's going to be, well, I've heard it. They said it, that, that, that'll be the way you get your food. And, and they said the false prophet, yeah. the false Christ or whatever, is in charge of that all of them. Well, there's a lot of things along that line. I mean, like, in other words, I think I mentioned in one of the classes that was brought up, and I said I had an aunt that was adamant. Um, 
well, that's when the barcodes first started, that that was the mark of the beast, you know, the, the barcodes. Anytime something new comes out, people try to say this, 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 that, and the other. But the bottom line is, like Mark said, when the Lord comes back again, surprise, at the, we're, when you least expect it, expect it. <laughs> we'll, be doing, we'll be doing our thing. So the thing is, our thing better be a good thing. <laughs> what we're doing better be a good thing. You know, Okay, I appreciate the, the question and discussion will come back. But seriously, read that, that book and see what you think. And it, make sure, but it, look at it as it points you back to Scripture. Because it's the Scripture that matters. Right. Not, not, what, not what Dave thinks or Mark thinks or Mark thinks. Um, you know, it's, it's what the Scripture says. So anyway, I appreciate the discussion. A good encouragement for us and reaching out to others as well. There may be someone here tonight that's not a Christian that needs to become one, that needs to put your Lord on in baptism, and we have, you know, everything's prepared and ready if you would like to do that. There may be someone as a Christian who needs prayers on their behalf, needs to respond in some way. And there's many different things we could say, but I'm going to read the words of the Lord Himself as He gives the great invitation in Matthew 11 28 through 30. This is Jesus speaking. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We invite you to come. The Lord himself invites you to come. If you need to respond, won't you come? Why together we stand and sing? bow as we pray. Father, my God, we are uh, humbled to be before you this time in prayer, Lord, and we just thank you for blessing us with this day, for this opportunity to gather together in the midweek to study thy word. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, as we go our separate ways and we continue our own personal studies, that you will give us a knowledge and understanding that we need to rightly understand and interpret your word and apply it to our lives. Uh, please forgive us of our sins when we fail you. Uh, be with us now as we separate and keep us safe until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.